December 18th, 2017, and you're listening to Human Factors Cast, Episode 70. Today on the show, we'll be taking a look back at our 2017 predictions. We're going to go through every single story we talked about this year in the context of the entire year, and we're going to make predictions for 2018. Human Factors Cast starts right now! to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to one of our last episodes of Human Factors Cast for 2017. I'm your host, Nick Rome, joined today by Mr. Blake Arnsdorf. Oh, man, Nick, are you ready to close out 2017 for Human Factors <sighs> Cast? I'm ready to do it, man. We got no banter this week because it's been an entire week since Blake and I talked. Really, it's been a day, but it's okay because we are here. We are here to talk about our 2017 predictions, kind of look back on those. We're here to break down every single story that we talked about this year. Don't worry. Those will go pretty quick. Might be a longer episode, but we'll see. And then we are going to get into our 2018 predictions in the field of human factors. So, Blake, I'm going to ask you to recap for our listeners what your 2017 predictions were. All right, so let's recap here. So my first one was there was a there will be a rise in AI mental models starting with mobile phone technology. So my guess is that we will see Google having more human-like conversation capabilities. Now, I don't really know if this one was totally correct, uh, but they did start releasing a lot more products that are kind of similar to, you know, what you would see from Alexa, right? But sure. this is more of the virtual assistant, not so much direct AI. Yeah, there's definitely been a, a push for more conversational-like technologies, right, that get into uh, how you want to basically interact with a computer as a social actor. Definitely, yeah. And, I mean, there's the big rise in just, like, the voice UI design, too. I mean, so it's 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 kind of there, but as far as, like, the deep AI being rooted into your mobile phone, that's not quite there yet, or not quite to where I was predicting it to be. Okay, so if we were scoring this, would you give yourself... Okay, let's say it's out of... Uh, let's say each of these are out of one point. You can give yourself half points. That's okay. What would you give yourself for this one? Banana. No, I'd probably give myself like a point five because, I mean, Google, along with a lot of different companies, have released more conversational AI type products, but they're more along the lines of virtual assistants. And again, I feel like I'm too novice to really say that that's true AI. Um, I feel like that's just really, really good learning algorithms. Uh, so I would give myself a point five. OK. All right. So let me get into my first prediction here we would see the first Uber-style flying cars test. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How, that's, a, that's such a crazy one. How optimistic I was at the beginning of 2017, although we did see a lot of progress with companies announcing initiatives to start uh, having these sort of, um, you know, uh, on-demand flying cars, right? I mean, we see it in Dubai. We saw it with uh, Boeing and uh, a couple other companies, right? that are doing these um, VTOL vehicles that will uh, potentially act as these ferrying services. So I'm also, no, I'm not even going to give myself a half point for that because it's there's not really any testing. It's just a bunch of announcements. So I don't know, man, because I thought for the oh, Dubai wait. story, yeah, there was, one there was in Dubai. an okay. actual, there was like an actual flying car. That's now, right. It wasn't put into the, production or There wasn't any like humans service, on, was there was humans used. on board? I forget. Were there humans on board that one? Uh, I want to say that somebody flew in it. Okay. I'll give myself 0.5. All right. Let's, let's just go with that. All right. What do you got for your next one here? Oh, man, this this one I was really pinning all my hopes and dreams on. So I was thinking that Elon Musk was going to release much more concrete plans about the missions to Mars and potentially more co commercial space travel to Mars. Instead, what I got was that he thinks we need to nuke the hell out of it in order for us to make it an inhabitable planet, which, hey, that's that's progress, right? But not so much along <laughs> the lines of, uh, you know, commercial space travel. Sure, sure. So uh, how many points would you give you f for that one? 
Uh, I'm going to give myself a clean point, too, because he did make comments about Mars, so I was right okay. in that regard. All right, so, so you at least got some Mars news out of him. So you're at a yeah, point. Yeah, I get a little Mars news. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I said there's going to be a major cybersecurity breach that forces us to reconsider the human factors of cybersecurity. Uh, I would say I pretty much hit this one. I believe when we recorded the episode, I kind of said there'd be like a 9-11 uh, um, uh, equivalent of some sort of breach of cybersecurity that would really make us look at it. Although there wasn't really any 9-11 there, there wasn't any, anything as devastating as 9-11. There've I been... mean, that's true, but there was so many different ones. So that, like, it, it, although it didn't reach the scale, you were definitely on the nose about the security breach. Yeah, I mean, well, we had the Equifax breach, and that one was pretty big. That impacted a lot of people. Um, I'm going to give myself a point eight on this one. I like it. I think that's pretty fair. Okay. But hey, anybody out there listening to this, especially if you happen to be on our Slack or you'd like to join, feel free to dispute what you think we are giving ourselves yes. point wise. Yes. We may be incorrect. Yes, we may be. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm also curious as to your 2018 predictions as well. So jump in our Slack. Link is in the con- in the uh, in the description. Jump in our Slack and let us know or tweet at us. You know, I'll give that info at the end of the show, but. Do let us know what your 2018 predictions are, and we'll read them first thing next year. So uh, why don't you jump into your last prediction that you had for 2017? Okay, so this one I wasn't completely wrong on. So YouTube would become a bigger media mogul like a Netflix or a Hulu. And I was scrolling past one of the stories that we had read, and it's I know we'll go over it, but I think it was like 1 billion views per hour on YouTube. Now, more what I was getting at was the, the money they're making based off of self-generated content. Uh, Because there was like a a really big push to basically have it become its own network. And for some reason, I really thought it was just going to, you know, kind of take over the world. Um, So although it did gain a lot of traction, and I mean, there's even the subscription service and a lot of YouTubers have like created actual like movie cinematography content through it that's kind of similar to Netflix or Hulu. It didn't become like a mogul of that size yet. So because of that, I'm going to give myself a point eight. All right, that's solid. I would have given you a point eight as well. Okay, this last one for me was self-driving cars will encounter the first real-world example of the trolley problem. Now, as we were going through these stories right before the show, I didn't see anything that was even tangentially. I know we've talked a lot about autonomous systems and uh, driverless vehicles, um, but I can't remember if they encountered the trolley problem. I think the only the only thing the only two stories I saw that are akin to it is we did see the first Tesla crash right th- using autonomous tools, but also I, there was like a movement to I don't really remember the story all that well, but it was like a movement to allow people to get in this aka moral machine right. and understand what it was like to develop like these uh, self driving car decisions in these particular precarious situations like the trolley problem. But other than that, I don't think we've encountered it, at least in the news. Okay, I'll go with point one on that one so you can win. Winner. (laughs) Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, what do you want to win? Um, I want to win 2018's predictions because okay. I like those better than my 2017 ones. Yeah, I really like our 2018 predictions. That's a little teaser. You're going to have to sit through every single story we talked about this year. But let's go ahead and jump into them. Uh, so this is where we're going to kind of just go down the list. Uh, the way we're going to kind of tackle this is we're going to look at every news story that we talked about this year. And if there's some other additional comments we want to make on it, jump in. Like, this is our time to revisit, hey, this is coming out later this year. Oh, yeah, I actually saw that. You know, this is our time to do that. So we're not going to jump in depth on everything. This is going to be very surface level. This will be just kind of a brief glance at 2017 to remind ourselves uh, what this year was all about in the field of human factors. Okay, Blake. I'm going to tackle this thing. Are you ready? Oh, boy. Here we go. Let's go. All right. So we had that David Bowie interview who talked about the internet back in 1999. Uh, You had uh, tech that was hot in 1997, which was like DVD players, the original PlayStation, Gigapets. 
Which is crazy to think about in 2017 how far we've like escaped, especially from like oh, the yeah. DVD players and the OG PlayStation, but Gigapets especially. No kidding. Ten year anniversary of the iPhone. IPhone. Oh man, how how the mighty have fallen in like less than <laughs> a year, I guess. Like like with the uh, like I don't know, going back to the scandal or not the scandal, but the release of the iPhone uh, update that was so horrible and then like a lot of big names speaking out against apple's design it's it's kind of interesting that they call it the revolutionary it's because it's definitely revolutionized the phone industry but now people are nitpicking it right yeah uh yeah it's interesting to see in the context of all the other stories that came this year um all right so we have stanford researchers uh using a centrifuge that costs just a few cents and runs without a charge that was cool brilliant we had the uh announcement of the nintendo switch um and, you know, I've used this a couple times now, and uh, I'm starting to like it, man. I know my initial sort of reactions to this thing were pretty what? negative. What? I can't even believe it. <laughs> yeah, I want to buy one now. But so, so like, I, I always if wanted to buy one. we go back to that episode, you just tore the Switch apart. I did. And I still believe it has a lot of design problems, but I think... Uh, it's the sum of its parts and not like it, it, I'm getting nitpicky like people are getting nitpicky on Apple. So there's that. OK, let's see here. U.S. regulatory agency oversees federal level transportation. Um, oh, yeah. The Committee on Automation. Yeah. So I had a really horrible thought about this and I almost don't want to bring it up because we've talked about not being political. But do, do you know if this has been disbanded over certain parties actions i don't know um i feel like that's not completely out of the question uh, yeah i was kind of bummed uh, out about that but i also think that it didn't happen uh because we're seeing so much legislation going on and i feel like we'll see this name again in I, stories later down the road i think so too uh stressful jobs are linked to heightened activity in the amygdala associated with greater risk of heart disease and stroke that was back when we kind of didn't know what to pull um yeah doing the I psychology this sign. Was nuts though because it's all about like rate i thought you were gonna let or it was gonna say like you get a lot more rage because it's the amygdala i didn't think it was gonna be heart disease and stroke though yeah that's interesting um <laughs> older adults who are physically fit may be keeping their brains in good shape as well good for designing for the elderly uh let's see oh porn company in japan opened a location in tokyo where people can don a virtual reality helmet to watch porn yeah leave it to leave it to japan to be you know <laughs> pushing the limits my man i remember well, i don't know it's one of those things it's getting vr out in the world although it's for a, a kind of illicit purpose if you will uh but still you know getting people exposed to it i don't know uh, let's, yeah let's I'd... get out of here <laughs> let's get okay next one. Oh, netflix's new original film iBoy. never saw it i didn't see it either <laughs> uh, oh yeah, this one was a. I liked this story. Friday the Thirteenth, Thin Air Flight Six 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 landed in Helsinki. The airport's name is Hell H E L. That was just such an awesome set of coincidences to happen. It was too funny not to bring up on the show, regardless oh, yeah. of whether it had any kind of merit. Wonderful, see one in twenty eighteen. Uh, we had uh, LinkedIn launched their huge Facebook like redesign. Uh, Which make... is funny here because it says in the like little blurb, LinkedIn revamped their website to be less confusing. I will argue, sir, that I'm still confused. I'm still quite confused as well. I still don't know what's going on. Um, you have MIT creating the 3D printing technique that allows you to change polymers in an object after printing. Uh, that's kind of cool from the prototyping standpoint for uh, the actual ergonomics of something. We've seen such mind-blowing things from MIT's various MIT labs this year, but this, one, this is one of the crazier ones, like being able to change literally polymer structure after it's been printed. That, just, I don't know, it still blows my mind. They've I'm not been, even sure I understand it fully. They've been on it this year. Yeah, uh, I, I think it could be, again, our bias, but could I be. feel like they've taken a lion's share of some of our stories. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Uh, okay, yeah, this one spawned the uh, bidet. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> the, the the super the okay. So standardizing symbols for foreign visitors on uh, toilets in foreign countries. I thought that was a really cool article, uh, despite the funny conversation that it spawned. 
Honestly, man, that was probably the most human factors thing to tackle, right? Because we're like talking about symbology that's got to communicate across different language barriers and how you kind of get over that. And Japan was out there nailing it with, even though it was for super toilets, like that's a that's a human function you have to really think about. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I think it's a great story. We saw the uh, NHTSA release the findings from the uh, fatal Tesla autopilot crash. Um, yeah, this was like our original kind of battle back and forth, right, about is the, who's at fault here? Is it the autopilot and Tesla? Is it the driver? This was kind of the first dive into that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll see that a couple other times when more details came out. Um, we found out that the F-35 has more problems than we thought. Uh, researchers pair cells to smartphones. That was interesting. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that you can like have bacteria that recognize electrical signals and the implication being that at some point you're going to be able to directly communicate with your cells through your smartphone that is Uh, young people regularly wake up in the night to check or send messages on social media not surprising Uh, we got Gabe Newell talking about game design and iteration cycles Uh, we got uh, let's see here Denver takes fastest airport Wi-Fi whatever um <laughs> doomsday Again, clock yeah <laughs> doomsday clock because of politics sean spicer more politics but tweeted a password which is like some cybersecurity issues right we see uh, again with the cybersecurity theme this year or even designing for yeah this is gonna sound horrible designing for the elderly right like the, <laughs> he might not be so like hip to the twitter or like hip having to, to deal with his smartphone all the time and just Maybe did not. it by accident i mean Who that's knows? that makes sense to me uh, we took a look at the new uh, astronaut spacesuits that are straight out of 2001. Got Echo's new wake word, which is a gift of the Trekkies. So this is computer, and I actually got to try this out. Uh, and I I found out that once I switched it to computer, I use computer way too often in my colloquial language uh, for it to, <laughs> to be practical. That's awesome. <laughs> we got uh, the dating app that matches uh, missed connections. Let's see here. What else we got? Uh, Oh, yeah. People are experiencing motion sickness with Resident Evil 7 and VR. Um, Which makes total sense. Yeah, it does. One, it's scary. And two, yes, you're going to get sick slashing your head around getting away from monsters. We got the ads in Facebook Messenger. uh, Six examples of game UI design. Hybrid human pig stem cells, embryo organ transplantation. All right, now I have to know. I really feel like this was this had to do something with MIT. <laughs> I'm just going to scan the article as it? quick as I can. <laughs> oh man. So this Oh, one, I'm wrong. But that's all right. <laughs> yeah, this is this is Salk Institute and they yeah. basically put human cells into a pig to see what happened. <laughs> But it's 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 crazy. I know it, that was kind of an off the wall one for human factors, but like the implication of that is just stunning. Yeah, so uh, Amazon sells out of 1984. Um, we had everybody a, freaking out. <laughs> yeah, we had a robot that was able to trick Captcha into thinking it was a human. Um, we had a brain computer brain computer interface that allows completely locked in people to communicate. Now this was a cool story, man. I that I, was one of the best of the year. Yeah, like I, it it really got me excited about BCIs and just what you could actually. I don't know the the possibilities of adding implants into your brain for not just like the hyper intelligence aspect, but improving people's lives. For sure. Uh, Netflix engineers hacked a brain controlled interface. Uh, This was basically to surf channels. If I remember correctly, you are right. Um, Astronauts brains change shape during space flight. Uh, Let's see. Oh, here's another one by MIT made wearable uh, nose conversation going. I don't know what that was. This is uh, uh to to pull back the curtain. We have these as links. So, oh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So it's like it it was a wearable that knows how a conversation is going. So I guess it was just monitoring your basically your skin sen- or your galvanized skin sensitivity. That's right. That's right. You know what? I'm gonna give you another point one towards your prediction because I think that one actually kind of plays in nicely. Um. We saw the invention of Lego Life, which is a social network for kids, and we kind of talked the implications on that show. Man, um, that is just a theme everywhere, the social networks like really getting ingrained into our lives. Yeah, I completely agree. We had, uh, you can watch the Super Bowl and Half-Baked VR. 
uh, we had a PSVR story um, where y- now you can watch 3D Blu-rays in VR on the PlayStation. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Nintendo will add VR to the Switch if it can solve one problem. I don't remember what that problem was. Do you, Blake? Uh, no, I do not. All right, let's who knows? <laughs> let's move on to the next one. Let's see here. We got uh, New York sues over slow internet speeds. Oh boy. That's, that is so crazy, especially right now. Right now, with the whole net neutrality. net neutrality issue, this is crazy to think about. That just earlier this year, New York was suing over slow internet speeds, and now, <sighs> yeah, all right. Just a quick shout out: like Thursday's the vote. If you guys are make some noise in stopping net neutrality, there's plenty of places to do it through Twitter or on the internet. Just search for them. Uh, but again, if that's not something you're interested in. Don't worry about it. Don't but worry it about is, it. But if it is, say something. make some noise. All right. We got, uh, what's the next one here? Snitching Inconsiderate Parker. Uh, so there's an app that pays you to snitch on uh, asshole parkers. Uh, we got Hulu adding VR support, Surgeon VR. Uh, oh, yeah. A surgeon basically uses um, VR for treating his patients. Yeah. Instead of actually putting them under on medication, they just had them play a vr game which is incredible yeah that's that's crazy all right blake you want to you want to take a couple here yeah let's go all right so paris hopes traffic light removal will fix congestion and improve safety uh i think what happened there was that did not work did Um, they do roundabouts instead yeah i think they just did roundabouts or they actually were trying to not trying to change the road structure um, which is what may have had an impact, but it wasn't. Oh, that's right. If I remember correctly, it wasn't the light change. Um, uh, so this was kind of a cool, and I don't know if it still exists, but Google Maps added a feature to create a bucket list that you can share with your friends. Uh, oh, my favorite man of the hour, Mr. Elon Musk, reiterates the need for brain computer in- interfaces in the age of ai so that's definitely the case Hang part on. of my 2018 predictions too yeah take a quick note of this one because both blake and i have some predictions that kind of link to this one yeah and i i expect to see big things from Neuralink, and that's like kind of where all this starts i guess that's crazy all right so what's going on all right so uber hires nasa aircraft engineer to help develop the flying cars hey. for uber elevate now this hasn't actually come out yet right. but that's a step forward man i'm gonna give <laughs> you a point two because oh that's, my god that's point pretty two. spot on i don't know i was uh, already a well i guess i was a point five all right so point five to point seven got it like uh, it. we're gonna adjust and we're gonna see who wins at the end of this thing there we go. All right. So, the, whoa, whoa. oh, yeah, this is the zombie apps thing. So millions of apps were purged from the Google Play Store. That's uh, right. That was a pretty awesome move by Google, and I think it just required a lot more, uh, you know, competence in developers and making sure that they're not producing just zombie apps. Uh, all right. So Spotify and AccuWeather team up to match music, mood, and monsoons. Have you used uh, that feature? I'm a, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> you basically hook up Spotify to AccuWeather, and uh, it'll play like a, 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 a climate playlist. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I haven't so used it. if it's it. monsooning out, it's going to play something that's going to soothe you through the monsoon, I guess? Hopefully. Or just, you know, stress you out. Yeah, it'd probably be like heavy middle. Ah! <laughs> All right, so dating app Sapio. Sapio? It's a bio. I don't know. Matches singles based on intelligence level. <laughs> I don't know why I think that one's funny. You know what? Uh, we actually saw another dating app this year that matches based on political preference. Oh, that's true. Now, that, that I don't seems think we like talked something that. that makes sense. Although, I, I don't know. I have friends that don't have the same political views as I do, and I, I think they're great people. Yeah, well. <laughs> you know, when, when you're dating a partner, I think it's a little more important. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it, it, yeah, it also it depends, depends on, on you. Yeah, it depends on you and how into politics you are. So there is that too. Most definitely. All right. So Bill Nye is saving the world. Oh, you through missed Netflix. You missed Google enhancing. <laughs> oh, that's right. So Google figured out a way to zoom and enhance photos, just like in the movies, which is no surprise because I mean they've they've come out with some great just imaging technology in general with Google Earth. It was only a yeah. matter of time before they were enhancing, you know. Vote, photos just like the films enhance so we had the yeah. bill nine one did you actually ever see that 
Nah, I just, like, when it came out on Netflix, I was like, ah, I should give it a shot. But, like, the trailer they showed me just, I was not stoked. I wasn't really all that big of a fan of it on Netflix. I was super expi- excited because Bill Nye was a big part of my life, right? And, you know, I this is, uh, he, he's done, no one can argue that he hasn't done a lot of really good things for the scientific community, but... He just came off as so arrogant in his show, uh, and he's kind of just chiding people who believe the things that they believe and not really providing the facts and letting those speak for itself. He just seems angry, and I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, he used to be the nice scientist in the classroom. Now he's the <laughs> seems kind of like Crotchety the old older man. angry man. Yeah. Oxite uses augmented reality to aid the visually impaired. Now, this is where I really started getting excited about like the applications of both AR and VR when we saw them in these contexts outside of kind of like the Pokemon Go and the v- right. and, like the video game VR. So that was an awesome one. Oh, this one Oops. this one scared me looking at it. So the accidental inbound missile warning scares the hell out of Navy, I think, or Air Force guys, I think it was. That was both hilarious and uh, just kind of daunting that that would happen. Right. Um, all right. Oh, one of my favorites sends a fire spewing drone to burn trash. Now, <laughs> I think this was in Japan, if I'm not incorrect, but it's a scary picture. I encourage people just to type that into Google. Oh it's just God. literally a drone yeah, flying, was, spitting fire. It was so cool. But it, I mean, it was, it's also Paris, by the way. Uh, and oh, it was Paris. It's Paris. Interesting. Yeah, and they basically just want to burn trash off of these lines to um, for to improve safety and fix congestion. Hmm. Well, you know, maybe it works. Oh, wait. Never mind. That's a broken link. It may have very well been. <laughs> uh, I was about to say, because that sounds awful lot like the Paris story we read about the lights. Yeah. But anyhow, you know, we're, we're here keeping it going. Uh, so, f- oh, this one was really weird maybe glad i don't use facebook so this creepy tool reviews how facebook's ai actually oh. tracks and studies your activity by the way the the drone was in china okay ah that, you got it right shoot bummers uh but anyway th- so this this was also i don't know this is one of those cool stories about facebook because it was like oh they're using so much ai already there and again that's that's kind of been some of my predictions that we'll talk about later but the tracking and studying of your activity was kind of end of a stage not stage falcon 9 rocket at cape the land on a mobile barge that is awesome and to think that we were living in a world where that wasn't possible earlier well, this year it, yeah, well, it's nuts. I mean, only a couple of years ago in grad school, I remember one of my guy, one of my friends showing me the, I don't know, the vertical landing of the dragon, and that just didn't even seem real. But now they're landing them, like you said, in the water, on platforms. Just I don't know. It's nuts. It's crazy. All right. So MRIs predict which high risk babies will develop autism as toddlers. Now that's a that's an interesting story, and I wonder I wonder where this science is now. Yeah, I don't know. Um, But this kind of goes with that story that we actually talked about last week or or yesterday uh, or last week for our listeners, because let's not let's not break that facade. Uh, But, you know, with the chip that you implant into your head. Oh, yeah, it's really true about detecting seizures. Yeah. Yeah. Along those same lines. Now, I'm going to have to peek this one, but it's but the headline was, why should you donate your medical data when you die? And I'm taking a guess at this maybe feeds into you know algorithms or any or stuff like that or maybe that was the hope is that yeah. the more data we have that we can talk about from deceased patients maybe we can feed it into some of our machine learning um not really sure looks like ethics are involved as well in terms of uh yeah research and and databases of sharing data all that stuff i don't know i'm, I'm, yeah. I'm skimming through the article it's very very cursory it's a Beast. All right. So here we go. BCIs again hitting it in the news. A so big improvement to BCIs. Newly developed glassy carbon electrodes transmit more robust signals to restore motion in people with damaged spinal cords. Again, like really seeing the application of these BCIs for basically kind of healing people, especially those that might not have, you know, had function or had lost function and maybe some of their lower limbs. So right. I don't know. It's a it's an awesome world. 
Okay, so my, this was pretty cool, Microsoft. So Microsoft open sources a simulator for training drones, self-driving cars, and more autonomous-type vehicles. Awesome play by Amazon. Oh, that was Microsoft. Nick, I don't know if we were planning on doing this, but I think I'm going to do my favorite story of the year. What? Your favorite yep. story of the year? Okay, this has better be a good one here. I see what uh, it is, but I mean, yeah, I'm just typing it up. It, it, well, it is for me. <laughs> if anybody's disappointed, let me know in the Slack. Okay, so modding a portion 911 to play Doom is absurdly dangerous, but absurdly <laughs> awesome at the same time. Yeah. I just thought that was a great, ridiculous story. Uh, and who else would have picked that one but this guy? Uh, all right. So, Lego Batman movie, Siri, iPhone, Apple Watch. Okay. <laughs> it sounds Sorry. like you're so... just making stuff up. This one was basically... Um, so, it's y- kind of like the Amazon Echo thing, right? But for Siri with Lego yeah, Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. Epic, yeah. I don't know if I tried that one. I feel like we listened to a clip on the internet or something. Pewter. Yeah, yeah. Pewter. So, heroic driver sacrifices his Tesla to save unconscious man in runaway Volkswagen. Oh, I remember watching this video. Yeah, this, that was an intense one. But that was Hats off to one. you, sir. Do you want oh, me to, man. Do you want me to take you over go. for a little bit? Say what? Do you want me to take over for a little bit here? Yeah, no better story to take <laughs> over than this one. All right, I love this one. I wouldn't say it's my favorite of the year, but it's definitely up there. Dubai plans to introduce flying drone taxis as early as this summer. And this was earlier in the year. So we actually did see some initial uh, uh, initial tests, uh, which played into the predictions. We had the Hover Surf hover bike. Uh, so that's like the first hover bike that was actually manned um, and looks like incredibly dangerous. You had... Yeah, it looked insane. <laughs> <clears throat> you had uh, a, another use of VR in the hospital uh, to make MRIs less scary for kids. Um, Paris Paris has been on it this year, you guys. Like, Paris Airport hopes facial recognition answers long lines. Basically, they're, um, yeah, they're, they're looking at facial recognition to improve the, the wait times because if you're pre-approved in the database and whatnot. Um, you have online daters ignore wish list when choosing a match. Uh, which is both surprising and not surprising. <laughs> yeah, people are like that, man. I, it's it's one of those, like, why would you do that? But, you know. Hey, this one ties into last week. No spoilers! Most people don't want to know their future. Yes, uh, and that includes the future of what Star Wars is. Yeah, the embargo no lifted spoilers. last... Uh, oh, yeah. The, the Last Jedi came out this weekend. It was amazing! But <laughs> I won't say anything else, because... You don't want to hear all about it. It was yeah, amazing, though. It's let's just too far in the future for you now. Oh, I saw it six times this weekend. Uh, okay, let's see here. Where are we at? Uh, YouTube now says people watch one billion hours of video every single day. That is just mind blowing to me. That's too many, too many people watching YouTube. That's I so agree. crazy. Uh, oh yeah, there's that browser simulation that allows you to wreck cars to train self driving vehicles. Um, a BCI brain computer interface allows uh, speediest typing, so it actually hooks up to you and allows you to type. Um, oh yeah, and I think this was actually applied to maybe, or maybe it's a different story, but I think it was applied to people also being able to type with their brain that were yeah. um, that couldn't use their limbs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you had Hater, an app for finding. We really like our dating apps here. An app for finding someone who dislikes the same things as you. Um, <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> that's fun. Uh, let's see here. We had augmented reality may limit road rage. That's interesting to see kind of the intention of the other drivers on the road. Um, I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything you need to know about uh, cloud bleed. Oh, yeah, we had cloud bleed as well. So we had the Equifax. We had cloud bleed. We had. Um, now, cloud bleed was pretty serious. That like, one that was, was a pretty really serious too. one. Yeah. So we did see some pretty serious shit this year. All right, let's see here. We got hard light VR suit will vibrate all of your bodily function buttons. I don't know what that. I don't remember what that is. I think it's just a haptic suit. Um, Alexa free speech. I don't remember what this one is. Oh, could this be? Uh, I don't know. Oh yeah, the story that where Alexa was going to be used against people. That's exactly what it was. It was the using the data from Amazon devices in court cases. Um, oh man, yeah that that, and I think they actually did use it, didn't they? And then it was the the ethical question about, oh, you know, does that really work? Right, right. We had uh, 
Google's mixed reality tech showing faces behind VR headsets. So this is kind of superimposing uh, eyes behind a VR headset, which was kind of cool. I like that idea. Um, Weird. Oh, yeah. People racing to see how fast they can get banned from Club Penguin. That children's yes. game. That was fun. This uh, is one of those where I think we were too late to the party to actually try it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fluffy Dogtails could be the next step in human-robot interaction. I believe it was a Fluffy Dogtail attached to a Roomba, right? And it just kind of showed, like, uh, that this this whole concept of having a fluffy tail in the household establishes some sort of um, compassion for robots. Is Am I remembering correctly? Yeah, yeah. It was, like, ma- something familiar that it, it's kind of like when we design hum- or robots look like humans. It's just something right. we know. Right, right. Uh, Disney developed a method for wirelessly powering an entire room. That is insane to me. Wireless. Yeah, that was pretty nuts. Oh, watch the video on that one, guys. Uh, We had a lot of Disney stuff this year. Yeah, Disney's uh, research. For a couple months in the earlier in the year, at least. Disney's research has been on it this year too. Paris and Disney. You, I applaud you guys. Get Uh, it. We had NASA released a ton of software for free. Oh yeah, that's right. That whole repository. Um, Amazon broke the internet. Which when a- AWS went down, uh, we had Yelp uh, finding gender neutral bathrooms, which is an amazing step forward for uh, progressive liberals um, like myself. <laughs> and uh, let's see here. So we have uh, Walmart introducing an app to kind of uh, combat those express lanes where you can kind of just scan your stuff and go. Kind of, I, I, I think, right? Or you? Scan- I thought it was like to make it even faster. Like you were scanning stuff through your phone. Yeah, and, and then, then you paying through your phone. Yeah. Well, I, I know we saw that with uh, Amazon and their their physical stores as well. Uh, Google Play now considers user engagement and not just downloads and ranking games. This was a cool one because it kind of cut the crap a lot with some of these bloatware apps. Yeah, Google Play was really on it this year with really cleaning up their content and then like really thinking about what should be ranked higher than the other. I applaud Google. Yeah, Xbox Game Pass offering a ten dollars Spotify like subscription for games. Um, people trying to switch, try, people trying to fix the Switch's dumb di- design issues. This was incredibly biased, but all right. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. I just realized Wonder- we should have grabbed some drinks for this one. We should have grabbed some drinks for this show and just kind of like made this our holiday special because, you know, we're just we're just messing around here. This is literally just going down the line. There's no rhyme or reason to this, listeners. We're just going through this, hoping that you know, we can have a good time doing it. Yes. Uh, we got sensors on uh, body uh, on, on a cop's body camera when their gun is pulled. Oh, that's right. So when they pull out the gun, Taser's infrastructure turns on the um, the camera. And we talked about the ethical issues of this, and it really plays in nicely to a lot of the themes that we talked about this year, especially coming out of HFES uh, with uh, Ron Davis. Yeah, and something I want to make, I don't know, this is just a point that I would like to make. I think the technology that's being implemented is it's got a lot of good merits because I think this keeps people on both sides of it very accountable by having video. Yes. Um, I, just, I still, like we've kind of talked about ad nauseum, I mean, the reason it doesn't work is based off these infrastructure problems. Uh, but I think you're absolutely right, but I think it's also opening the public's eyes when these videos get released. Like, did you see... The most recent video of that scared kid in the hotel. Yeah, that was that was nuts. I saw that on Joe Rogan's podcast, That's... and I could I don't know I couldn't really even believe it. And it was one of the situations where it's like you don't even know what to think. You can see yourself in that position, and it's like, what the hell, man? Like I was, like my heart stopped basically watching that. Like it, it was no. That's not. We need to fix the problem, and it's a human factors problem, and we need to get on it. Uh, yeah, it was, it was tough stuff. We can have a whole uh, pol- political episode, politically charged episode. We got haptic rip- wristband for the blind. That was cool. It allows blind people to navigate based on um, haptic feedback. Facebook was testing AI that helps spot suicidal users. Now, this is actually in place now. So if you say something on Facebook like, I just want to end it all, it'll say, hey, friends, this guy needs some help. Hey guys, help me! <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, you know that's that's such a good thing because detecting that early can really make a difference. Uh, Echo's voice ID feature. So this was the individual profiles of Amazon's Echo. 
Which is um, such an awesome feature, if especially like I don't know if uh, Justine really uses it too much, but I, you know, I would feel like if I had one in in the house, like having personalized stuff when you talk to it, would be pretty cool. Yeah, we we still haven't set it up here. Uh, we had the um, MIT programming a robot to self correct when a human detects a mistake. Uh, so that's that's a pretty neat advancement in uh, AR. Or not AR, what am I talking about? AI. Robotics, right? The other A. Uh, we had a Spanish tutor robot. We had uh, more Disney research about, talking about robots matching verbal styles with kids. This this one was intense because um, this one matched the uh, kids' vernacular, I think, right? Yeah, if I remember correctly, yeah, it was uh, it was kind of mimicking how they talked. That's crazy and scary because selling to kids is all right. Anyway, uh, CIA can hack phone. Um, maybe all says, those 1984 sellouts were warranted. Maybe uh, <laughs> new AI can turn police body cams into nightmare surveillance machines. All right, well, that's fun. Yeah, that was kind of like the the antithesis of what we were talking about earlier. Uh huh. Drone operators outnumber any other type of Air Force pilot. Uh, Airbus reveals a modular self-piloting flying car concept. That hey, one, there you go. That's that like one two was so cool. Wins for you. Um, warning: Your new digital world is highly addictive. Uh, Airbnb makes anti-AI pledge to hosts. What? Yeah, that one was interesting. That, that's basically how they. Uh, don't want to rule anybody out because of AI. Oh, yeah. They're not going to re- replace their human community with AI. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Um, Hugging Face wants to become your artificial BFF. That's the scariest name still to me. I don't Hugging know why. Face. Well, f- face huggers. That's why. Uh, Google's AI is so smart, it doesn't need to ask you if you're not a robot anymore. Which is just incredibly awesome. Like, thinking all the way back to just the Turing problem where it, we're trying to identify if something is a robot. Now the robot knows, doesn't need to know. Yeah, it knows human behavior. Yeah, the burger-flipping robot, which I still haven't seen. Google's Levi commuter smart jacket, which is now out. Um, we had Oculus introducing a Facebook live streaming uh, capability. See. Which I wonder how that went, or if that's it. There's anything with uh, Oculus Go now? Yeah, that, that would seem to be like a cool. I haven't messed with tie that in. at all. I have not messed with that at all. YouTube uptime is that still a thing? Is uptime still a thing where you can hang out with other people? Uh, I don't know, man. I tried to get some of our listeners, early listeners, <laughs> to hang out with me while I was watching YouTube stuff. It yeah, didn't work out. So nothing. Hard. Nick Crickets. All right. Uh, we had Dungeons and Dragons got their official app. Uh, there was that SMS from 2003. That was that was kind of like a creepy story. Yeah, that was a blast from the past, literally. There's a the iPhone case that's both an Android and an Apple machine. Oh yeah, that was so sick to me because I was like, well, why can't I get best of both worlds? Although yeah, I guess you could jailbreak your phone or whatever, but still. Yeah, uh, more from MIT. Uh, smart books can keep astronauts on their feet or smart boots can keep astronauts on their feet i think that was magnetic um sp- in keeping with the astronaut theme buzz aldrin turned to vr to explain how we can get to mars so not your man elon musk but buzz aldrin did if you had changed the name i know i would have been like <laughs> on it you, you would have <laughs> got a full one point i should have snuck in here and changed the name I know. Uh, uh, let's see here. Lowe's is using AR and VR to make how to easier. Uh, Lowe's Which is one of my favorite stories. Uh, I know, like, again, favorite story of the year. But one of my favorite stories. Pick one. I like seeing it. Uh, it's definitely the Porsche Doom one. That's the best story ever. But this was a cool one, like, from a human factors and design perspective, like, seeing AR and VR getting into uh, uh, consumer stores is just an awesome thing. Sure. Um, we had, uh, let's see here, and, and Lowe's, they were on it this year too because they had another story down the line that I'm sure we'll run into here shortly. Uh, Alexa combined with an animatronic skull. <laughs> yeah, d- the creepy train was very long this year. <laughs> yeah, it was. Intel developing genderless AI, which is interesting and something that we didn't even think about. Uh, wrapping robots prove at least one job is safe from the robot apocalypse. I that believe was we just a funny one. We oh, played the man, clip on the so show. Bad. Yeah, uh, skull drilling robot is good news for humanity. Uh, scientists wanted to find just how smart robot surgeons are. 
Uh, DARPA laid the groundwork for thought-powered prosthetics. Netflix. Which, like, dude, that one just blew my mind. Like, I know DARPA comes up with some crazy concepts and puts them into action, but this one, like, thought-powered prosthetics, that's that's the that's the real truth right there. That's that crazy. Is the ultimate future. That's that's Star Wars. That's, yeah. No. Exactly. Like like we saw this weekend, man. That was Star Wars. Uh, yeah. Same thing. <laughs> no spoilers. This is. This is. I should just do a timestamp really quick. This is six fifty four p.m. on on Tuesday, the twelfth. Just so everybody knows, I'm not yeah, messing with. Just them. so everybody knows, we haven't actually seen it. We yet. haven't We're seen it yet. No spoilers. All right. Gaming the system here. Uh, Amazon will now tell Prime members what to wear through that outfit compare feature. Thank you know, man. This has really saved my life uh, so many times. It's it's nuts. Not really, really. No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Netflix, I keep saying uh before everyone, I'm going to try not to do that. Netflix is replacing five star ratings with thumbs up and thumbs down. Now I've actually used this one. Have you used this one? Yeah. Do you like it, Nick? I don't know yet. I, I do. I hate it. I miss the five it. star rating. I know what it means. Uh, see, I like it because it forces me to make a choice. Yes or no. I know my partner doesn't like it either. She, she's very much like, no, I want a little bit more choice with my, uh, rating scale. So yeah, because I know the people that took the time to rate it one to five or one to four, whatever it used to be, like actually had to put a little effort into it and thought into it, not just like thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, but that's know. why they did it is because they wanted more engagement to then sell you more product. Yeah, so yeah, they, t- they totally got it. Like I, the ratings are way up there, but I have to say, even with them taking it away, I still get really good recommendations for stuff. So we go Netflix. Go Netflix. All right. U.S. Navy wants gamers to stop the rise of the machines. Yes, and we shall. Uh, fake news likely trusted shared by the right. Okay, so basically saying the fake news ah. shared by the right person could influence you. Which I feel like that's some kind of psychological phenomenon, right? Like if it's you get information be. from a trusted entity or person, you're likely to believe it regardless of the truth. Right. Yeah, there's that sting operation with fake news where it just basically blasted out a fake report to a bunch of uh, scientific journals. Oh, that's right. Uh, Walmart's Voodoo app now converts physical copies to digital for $2 each. I tried to use this with a couple films and no luck. No worky. Yeah. Hackers try to extort Apple by threatening to wipe iPhones. Uh, well, they didn't do they a good job. They didn't. <laughs> <laughs> sensory wearable designed for flirting that's the shoulder pads that's the epic oh. shoulder pads of flirting man th- that's like the tier p- that's that three tier piece suit or whatever from wow yeah. that's what that is that was really really weird i would never wear that thing all right four-year-old boy use siri to save his unconscious mother's life and i think blake that i'm gonna go out on a limb here and say this is in my top five for sure not quite sure if this is my number one but definitely up there Man, this is by far the most courageous use of Siri all year, so it gets some kind of recognition for sure. This kid, and it was nuts that it was like a four-year-old kid that knew to use Siri that in or- that basically saved his mom's life. It's just that's nuts to me. Yeah, you want to go on the next couple ones here? Let's do it, man. All right, so scientists just made oh no, electronic skin that is better than human skin. Uh. I don't know. That feels very wild bill to me. Yeah. So how pedestrians will defeat autonomous vehicles? Uh, How will we defeat them? Is this the rise of the machines? Uh, Oh, man. So Amazon considers opening augmented reality furniture stores. And I think we saw also companies that were furniture stores having augmented reality as part of their shopping experience. So Amazon trendsetter per usual. Uh, U.S. Cops facial recognition database is seriously inac- dangerously inaccurate. Yes, but this is earlier than a year, and I know we have a story later on that definitely brings up kind of the ethical implications of using something like this, so stay tuned. Ah, uh, yes, here we go. Elon Musk's Neuralink will plug AI into your brain. Yep, and oh, that's yeah. coming to my predictions. That was a great, that, or not a great, that was a, uh interesting announcement for sure. Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy because I remember seeing so much about Neuralink, and then I guess he just he bought it. So here and here we are with the neural lace and all that kind of good stuff coming up. Here we are. Oh man! So Windows create. Oh, this was awful because I was still using my Windows machine. So Windows Creators Update is full of neat tricks you will never use. Okay, it's not what I thought it was. I thought it was the one where it basically like crashed the system. 
uh, made everybody with a Windows oh, machine yeah. afraid. No, this one was like Paint 3D and uh, all the other tools that um, you know you never use. And yeah, I, I, I use a bunch of stupid stuff. I just tried Paint 3D for the first first time the other day, and it's ter- terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> Bummer. Terrible. Terrible. All right, so Congress just gave internet providers the green light to sell your browsing history without consent. That's awful. Awful. Yep, stop that now. Okay, you can now beg for money on Facebook. This was Uh, in the context of, like, a GoFundMe. Yeah, kind of like a GoFundMe or Facebook. I wonder how that worked out for him. I haven't heard anything about it afterwards, so I don't know. Ah, here we go. This is another one of those incredible medical stories from the year. So man with quadriplegia employs injury bridging technology so he can move again just by thinking. So similar to that idea that DARPA had with, you know, still can't believe it, thought-provoking prosthetics. But again, recording brain, I don't know, recording brain waves and then using it to stimulate muscles, ah, blows my mind. Hey Blake, uh, quick question yo. for you. Do you we're running up against fifty minutes here. Do you want to make this a two parter and drop it uh, on Christmas? Y- we or- better do that because who wants to listen to you and I banter on for two hours besides you and I? Oh, I so don't know. I think, I can I think, think of it's a good idea. Probably two parter. Few... Give them a break. They can go have a, a drink, and then we'll see you on Christmas. All right. Yeah. Well, we will see you guys on Christmas here. Uh, if you guys want to follow along with all the news stories that we are not posting, because Holidays are slow, let's be honest here. But you can follow us all over social media. Join us on our Slack. We are always having discussions over there. Head on over to the Human Factors Cast, LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter at HFactors Podcast. You can check out our SoundCloud or leave us a comment over there. Or send us an email at humanfactorscast at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 901-646-1432. That's 901-646-1HFC. Let us know how disappointed you are that this is a two-parter. <laughs> You can also support us on our Patreon at patreon.com slash humanfactorscast. Be sure to like, subscribe, review us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, or your favorite podcast directory. And, of course, you can always reach us at our home on the web, humanfactorscast.com. Mr. Blake Arnstorff, thank you for helping me break down the first half of 2017. We'll be back next week for our 2018 predictions. Where can our listeners go and find you if they want to talk about the first half of your predictions? Oh, you guys can always... (laughs) Make fun right. of me about my predictions in Slack. Or if you're into tweeting, you can hit me up on Twitter at Don't Panic UX. Uh, to all of you, have a very happy holidays, and I'll talk to you soon. All right. As for me, I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter at Nick underscore Rome. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in to Human Factors Cast. Until next time, oh, it depends. It depends indeed. We'll see you next week, everyone. <laughs>